So I made a walk cycle video and I got some comments about maybe making a run cycle video, but also some other suggestions like do a run to a stop. But I thought in order to do a run to stop, I'm going to need a run cycle first. So I think one good thing to look at is ugh, this bad boy. When you want to do one cycle, I made a survival kit. Richard William. It is how many pages are there? There are two, three, four. I mean, there's at least like 20 pages, probably more on purely run cycles, different types of run cycles, maybe 30 pages. There's just absolutely tons of really good stuff. I know for me, when I am kind of doing a walk cycle, I'm like, right, what are the poses again? I, I'm certainly guilty of just going to the animated survival kit and grabbing this very first drawing that's in there and being like, yep, yeah, those are my run cycle poses done. But there's a ton of variation you can add to run cycles. And I think this is actually for what I want to do today. I'm probably going to use something like this just to help get my poses in there. But there's a ton of information, a ton of variation to the cycles. And he gives a bunch of great ideas on how we can play with things and just make things not a generic cycle. So I think you think to yourself, oh, the Richard Williams run cycle, but there's not just one page on one image on run cycles. There are, is all of this stuff that is really worth checking out. But, you know, hopefully we can take some of these principles and ideas that Richard Williams talks about and apply that in 3D. And I can show you a bunch of techniques for translating this stuff into 3D and just getting something vanilla. And I said that with my walk cycle, but it ended up with something not very vanilla, but we'll see how we go with that and how polishy we get and how unique we make this cycle and then we'll see where the video goes because i haven't really made a plan all i know is i want to do a walk cycle same rig as the walk cycle same picker everything is the same using my 2024 and anim this <laughs> stuff can be used in any software i feel these tools are pretty much available in any software so anything fancy i use is purely going to be because i want to speed things up and make things as quick as possible but it's not as if i'm doing stuff that you can't do in another program or I'm using only my exclusive things. Any particular tool that I use here, there will be a version for Blender. There will be a version for, I'm, I'm not sure about Unreal actually, but there will be a version of what I'm doing or you can just do it manually. manually. But I want to be doing this fast. I don't want to be pandering to people who are like, oh, that I can't do that exact thing in Blender and then explaining myself in 20 different ways. I'm going to try and be efficient with this. I'm going to try and almost speed run this walk cycle so that I can be as real time as possible and not have to cut so much and speed so much of it up. So without further ado, I'm going to get that walk cycle up in the background just so I have a little bit of reference here. Da -da -da. Well, that'd be good if I could just keep it there, wouldn't it? So I've got an application called desk pins, which is quite useful. So all I do is I go on the application and just click it. Now that will stay pinned above everything else. So that's quite useful. Let's start with this first pose. I'm just gonna put them in the position that they need to be in. Maybe down a little bit. Now I'm not just gonna copy these poses because I, I have in my mind what I want, but this is a very good kind of reminder and cheat sheet of things to do. I do want him leaning forward. Have a nice fast run. We'll have that countering the legs. These will be nice and pushed. So because I'm going to see these from quite a few different views, I just want to make sure that I'm kind of making that fairly appealing. Take me a couple minutes probably, but it's worth doing, I think. All right, so I've got a hand pose. I'm just going to take this whole hand pose and mirror it. Just get a little bend in those limbs just to help this line of action of the arms. I like how bendy that neck is. To see from the front how this silhouette and everything is working. I think I'd probably push this a little more. The weight would probably be coming over. Oh, the weight would be pretty in the center right now. Okay. The arms are feeling pushed, but they're not feeling that connected. Just a little bit more connection. It's probably this angle here. Just so I can feel a little more flow through them. So maybe I can get a bit more of this. Yeah, that's a bit nicer. And then maybe I can push this just a bit. Thinking about extremes right now. Okay, that's feeling a bit more balanced to me. And the feet feel okay. I think we can probably grab this one and drag it more behind. So grab, pivot, 
and just push it out. But something generic and something like on the spot, kind of want it to work from all angles, which I think that does. So we have a contact and I want to have a contact on the other side as well. Let's just take that whole pose and mirror it. That works pretty nicely. In the middle, I'm going to do the tween machine and we've got Spider-Man riding a bike. But I don't want too, too much up and down. I want this to be quite a cartoony push run. I mean, you'll see what, what the run looks like based on the start of the video. I don't know what it looks like yet. I'm still making it zero out the roll. Mind that chest just to, like being a bit delayed behind the arm. I do kind of want it in its own silhouette a bit earlier. I know it's breaking a bit. That's something we could possibly fix at some point. But I also don't want the hips to be out of there nice line of action that I have right now. So I'm going to leave it for now. I'm going to try and push this and then worry about intersections and things like that at a later stage, if I want. In my mind, I'm kind of picturing the arm swing through at a slower rate than the legs. I'm picturing the legs kind of holding a bit in the air. And hopefully that makes more sense when I actually get into cleaning this up a bit more. Yeah, I probably want this driving through a little more actually, don't I? I'm not 100% on these poses at the moment anyway. These are all just kind of placeholders so I can go in and kind of fix it when I hit spline. I'm not worried about having things on steps yet or anything like that. I'm just putting in keys and I'm going to spline it anyway. So I think that feels pretty all right. So out the back arm, lead with the shoulder back a bit more and the elbow. I'm just watching that headspace to check that it's not moving up like way too much. So I just want to get that a bit more centered and that to fix that back on. And again, it's not very important. I'm going to fix that in spline anyway. I just want something in there to work with. So it'd be cool if this compressed more. Let's kind of get that. All right, so we have some poses. We have an up and kind of see that this is flashing a bit just because it feels like it's replacing that foot. And if we just go through this in spline right now, it's a total mess. So let's not do that. <laughs> and let's add in the next poses i want this to be quite a push cycle i don't want to just be kind of moving linearly the whole way through the cycle i want it to be very held at the top and then quickly so you're almost just reading these poses when he's in the air which i think will look quite nice so let's put in that down just going to use tween machine to just give me something in between these poses and i'll just go back to the previous pose on these reset the roll and just move that back a little this leg is going to start coming through again i don't want this to be too like linear so this was like a standard you know just walk cycle everything would feel a bit you know like at this point is going to be coming through perfectly here but i just want to hold that back a bit so the extremes of those legs are kind of in these positions a bit more so you kind of read them in in this area more than reading an entire cycle of back and forth back and forth it's going to be like like that and then i think this would be a good time to create a bit of overlap and drag in these arms also feel like it would be cool to lead with the chest a little more there just to kind of drive that run feel like it's nice to get a little well overlap is nice but when you just overlap and don't have anything driving it just feels a little unintentional at times so that arm might be too much to be honest but we'll see just putting something in just so i have something essentially and then i'll do some figuring out bit later i just want to grab the pose i had previously and then work out of that with cartoony stuff it can be useful to do that rather than just grabbing something in between two poses because that can just make things a bit muddy and a bit unin unintentional and just linear for example if i if i have that pose i'm just gonna put it here if i just grab something from the machine I'm not, to get this foot then working i need to do a ton of work it's just easier to grab this pose and then go back from there just so i have it's like grounded almost in that previous pose and i know where to go from that and i can control my spacing out of that it's just a good way to keep things a bit tighter 
I'm not making huge decisions right now, I'm not sure. But I might want this leg to overlap on this pose, for example. But I'm just putting something in so I can then work with it a bit later and see what we want. So then we need an up pose. I don't think of it so much as a passing position or an up pose. I think of this as a stretch pose. So you have a contact here, but this is an extreme pose because we have this at its lowest. So this is the squash pose. And then you have the stretch pose where if you don't have that pose and you just go from contact to up to contact, things don't feel super overlappy and organic. So if you then put in, you put in these poses which give you some squash and stretch, it really kind of starts to come to life. So again, this is a, a good example of just favoring things. So I, if I just went, then it would give me this, which actually, if I just lower it, doesn't work too badly. I feel like that's very valid for a run cycle. And you might want to do that with your run cycle, depending on how realistic. But I want to favor things more than that. So I'm going to give it a much more favored tween machine. And I'm also just going to put it closer to this final position here. Give it an arc. We pushed it a bit too much. And then I think the arms, it would be nice if they were a bit more held on the previous frame. But I'm just going to kind of look at the position of this hand and flick between my poses, see how much spacing that is giving me. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned, run cycles are definitely easier, at least in my opinion, than a walk cycle, because there's just less poses. There is less that you need to worry about. So you can kind of see me manipulating the root control, also the hip control when I just want to tweak some things. And that is because I don't really care too much about how that's going to spline and perfectly interpolate, because I could be going from a very different pose, from one pose to a very different pose within a frame. So you don't even necessarily need to spline that. You can just have things happen on ones. Maya should pretty much, well, Maya doesn't have to do any work because you're not using the interpolation of Maya or Blender or any software to get that in between because there is no in between. You're just animating on ones essentially. So if I create it's like drawings, which I like to do with all of my animation. If you watched a few of my videos, you would have heard me say that already. Contact, down, push off, position, up, contact. So like I did in the walk cycle video, I'm gonna take these keys, copy them using Animbot, don't have to use Animbot, and I'm gonna paste them. And now we have the same animation happening twice. I'm actually gonna grab these and I'm gonna hit mirror on those. And that should, should give us the same pose at the start and the end. They're pretty similar. I tweaked things while I was working on it, but I'm going to copy the start to the end. Now we have the exact same thing. If we go in here, select everything in the graph editor and post infinity and pre infinity cycle, this is now a run cycle. Now we don't want to leave it there. And particularly with the back foot, that is definitely doing some things that we don't want to do. It just feels like it stays in this position the whole time. So let's go in and spline it. It's fine. And let's start thinking about how we can clean this up. So first of all, before I do anything, I'm going to have a look at the timing. So I actually want these middle frames, anything that isn't part of this hole, to happen fast. So coming out of that, I kind of want the down to be quite quick. And then I want the passing position to probably be quite quick. Same on the other side. So we've already improved the timing a little. I know the poses aren't quite right. You can hopefully feel a bit of a bouncing ball in the center of gravity. I'm going to basically fix this all in spline now. So let's go in. And the most important one, obviously, is this translate Y on the hip. Now, if you want something super, super vanilla, you can just delete half of that. Now you have a run cycle or you have the up downs, essentially of that cycle. Let's do something which is nice and pushed. Decide where we want this up position to be. Feeling like that is going to work okay. We have one, two, one, two, three. Just try and match that on both sides a bit more. I think it's better to have two frames of down. Let's do that. Yeah. And then we'll keep these up even more. And see how that kind of looks. Just focusing purely on this area. Now we're going to need to adjust a few things here for sure. So you can see how fast this cycle is going to be if those are the poses on the floor. I definitely want a bit more up down in there. I think I've taken a bit too much of the motion out of it. Okay, there is still motion in there. I think before where I had it, 
it was kind of just sticking on those frames. See that? I want to avoid that. Because as nice as folding things are, when you have a run cycle, you do want it to be a little more fluid than if you were just doing a really pushed animation. With our walk cycle, what we did was one side of the leg and copy it to the other. It's exactly what we're going to do here. So I'm just going to clean up this leg as best as I can and then paste it to the other one. Another similarity to the walk cycle is I'm kind of going to work on the feet and the hips closely together as I can so that you don't get too much of a disconnect. There's a massive disconnect right now, so there is work to be done. But I'm just going to look at arc here, see if I can have something a bit better for the, the leg. Too worried about that rotation right now. I think it needs to continue forward more so that it doesn't just get stuck. And we have an arc. And then this one can really start to kind of ease out. But you can see if you look at the upper leg, it's all kind of doing a similar, it's in a similar place. It's not like coming forward this much, like, and giving us something a bit more linear. It's holding a lot more. Maybe we just want a bit more to bridge that. And maybe on this point, we'd actually want something to potentially even smear with this leg a little bit, just to bridge, because we're doing a lot of spacing between here and here. So there's potential. You can see how just adding a bit of an arc to it does help a lot immediately. We'll favor this side with Tween Machine, add a decent amount of arc to this. Now everything seems to be coming to down together there, so I think maybe I just want to start, maybe have the up frame earlier on that foot, and then have it start to come down, just to kind of lead that motion out. We frame through. Definitely get more overlap there. Push this. Okay, I think I quite like that. And you're gonna see the difference here when I, I'm just gonna grab this whole leg actually. Lead on this side, grab this one, mirror, and then offset that by seven and hit cycle. You can see the difference there already, how things are working a lot better just by adding arcs. Now things are in the same place, so I would change one side, maybe make one side a bit higher. But for something vanilla and something like mathematically perfectly balanced on both sides, that's working pretty nicely. Okay, so let's take another look at this hit. I'm going to leave it behind and let's go to the front view because I suspect there is some messy stuff going on. Oh, there is. Okay, so I haven't animated the translate on the hip at all. So I can fix this center of gravity knowing that I'm not counter animating anything. But I want to, at this point, this is the furthest to the side that I want to be with the X. And from this point, starts getting back over to the other side by the time we're kind of landing we want to be in the middle somewhere we're going to grab this and put that in the middle and when we land switch over to the other side again i don't want this to be too jerky right to left so try and match that as best as we can all right so on the take off want to have him forward a bit more it's going to be his extreme kind of ease back before coming forward again at its most extreme. Okay. Rotation wise we have I'm just gonna visually do this so I'm not gonna worry about cleaning it up too much in the graph editor. But if you want to do something slower in terms of a run I would probably clean that up. I'm just gonna visually make sure that it's working. So what I mean by that is at this point I'm gonna go into the hips and just any animation that I had on that I'll just clean up and make sure there's no weird pops. So let me go into the rotate Y. Just because this would take a little time to put onto the root controller or the hip controller. So I'm just not going to worry about it. If this gives me the freedom to push poses with just rotating something very easily, then I think that's a pretty good compromise compared to having perfectly clean curves. Now, the rotate X doesn't seem to be doing much, and it's just going to be effort to clean up two things at once. And that Mm, that is doing a little, so we'll clean up that. When that hip drops, we'll count that. Just try and match things on both sides. Now, let's clean it up on this side too. I want to think about how the character is leaning here and look at the headspace. So when things are doing that, it's probably too much. All right, quick pass on that Tate X. Probably drop down as we come through here slight but i think what's causing this big motion in the chest is that hip move and actually that could just be toned down a little so extreme there is 
34, about 34 here, 25, sorry. Hey, that works just a little better. It does affect the feet, which is why we didn't clean that up already. Now let's see what if we can fix the chest a bit. So I'll start with what's moving most, which of course is the rotate Y. I'm just going to like go through and see when I want things to happen. It feels like I'm leading just a bit too much, a bit too soon, I mean. Let's fix the Z because that is affecting things quite drastically right now. It's really throwing off the animation. Match what we did on the other side as best as possible. Okay, that's definitely cleaned up a lot more in terms of the chest. I actually quite like that now. The head will need some work for sure, but for now, it's pretty good. Have a look at this chest. I think that's just dipping down too soon. Let's just see if delaying it a frame works. Kind of does. And I think I want it just coming up a bit sooner. Maybe not that much. And then maybe here it can come up a little. And then we can drop that down. Keep that hanging back just a frame a bit more. Okay. So I'm just going to delete that half because that is a cycle. Like a, a half cycle in there. Similar to the walk cycle video. Things like the up down of the hips. That can just be half of a cycle. And it will cycle for the entire route. So if I cycle it for seven frames here, it will cycle for, it will work for 14 frames the whole cycle, which is pretty handy, which is why you can just delete half of this and it cycles perfectly. Rather than going in and trying to match this perfect one, I just want this exact same thing on the other side too, on the second half of the cycle. So let me just delete half the cycle. Now obviously that doesn't work for things like the translate Z because you're going from one side to another. So it's kind of going from that to that, but with a up down you're just like a rotate x you're just doing it for half of the cycle so, okay that's the chest cleaned up a bit better i might want to tone down some of the amount it's moving side to side just because that head is a bit wild but i might try and do that in the head and see what happens let's clean up the arm i don't even really want to use the graph edit for this so much if i can Let me start in this view. Now to clean this up, I am going to crack it by eye. Purely because I don't like cleaning up arms. You can do it in the graph editor for sure. So what am I looking for when I'm doing this? I'm looking at when the extremes hit. So it looks like that would overlap the shoulder, for example, there. So I'm just going to push that up. And now that works quite nicely. Control the spacing a bit better. That looks terrible. Doesn't look so great either. Let's try and get it down in there. So I feel like it's kind of driving back with that. Okay, shoulder feels a little better. It does feel a little washy, wishy washy though. Let's just try and have the arcs not so crazy. It just feels like it's got a bit too much movement. It's not feeling solid enough. That might be better if I just tween machine, see what happens. I'll just come down a little more than I had. Not as much as previously. Okay, nice. Let's have a look at this upper arm. So I think I want it to delay a frame. I'm just going to copy the frame from before and then just add a little motion up just so we don't get completely stuck in that angle. I'm looking at this back of the arm line here and tracking that through this cycle now. And then I'll go through and do it from the side or the front and see how that works. So I want that to kind of maybe be a bit lower down and then come through maybe up more and then start to ease out here and then kind of look at that line and see that it's starting to go down this feels a little disconnected in there i'm gonna see if i can delay that clavicle a little longer see how that works for me not looking at the lower arm right now i'm just purely looking at the upper arm and here we can probably favor the other side a little more so it's nice if the body is going down to have the arm continue up if you look at the spacing of the arm it kind of keeps going up it's nice a little bit more drive back in that arm feels like where we've got the big up happening in the body that that spacing would then drive the arm back more and let's favor that to the next frame we want to get into that up which it is kind of doing maybe a bit linear right now okay so in terms of the upper arm if i just step through feels like it's doing what i want it to be doing obviously that lower arm is not helping i'm just going to clean that up quickly just so it's not so distracting that's not doing it I think that needs to be that frame and then this one needs to be just starting to ease out maybe that would be at its most extended through this part and that would be its most extreme 
let's ease into that now i can tween machine and go okay it's easing in but if i look at this arm and it's not doing the spacing that i want it to i'll just come in and tweak it slightly you can see how that feels a little linear through there i'm just gonna again favor that next pose and i think that actually could be coming from the rotation of that upper arm so i'm not gonna pay too too much attention to that for now I just want nice compression and lead and follow through that arm when I want it. So that's quite hard balance is something that kind of takes some experience to understand. But essentially, if things are feeling locked one to one with this arm and the lower arm or things are feeling linear, then maybe you can play with that a bit more. So you can see here, if I have the upper arm just starting to come down, this is the lower arm is just doing a different spacing see how it's still on its way up so this is not exactly easing down i'm still having it just slightly just ease if you look at that angle it's going from here to here the lower arm then has a different spacing it doesn't feel disconnected let's clean up this as best as we can i'm actually going to take the orthographic top view here and use that to clean that up so i'm happy with that pose that pose is coming out too much going to use this yellow circle just to do it perfectly to camera so i know that then that is perfectly moving from this top axis and my side view then probably won't need to change as much as if i was just kind of doing this sort of thing just want it to kind of keep coming around and as this starts to come through the hand has just a different spacing so you get that nice offset but still connected feeling i don't need to be perfect with this i suspect that some of these things might change a little uh, i'm wondering here is if it should reach its extreme here and then start to ease round just so we don't go so in with that elbow hmm i actually like that that is then kind of going back and then arcing around and leading out with that elbow if i push that a bit more and then used to have that mm, i'm not sure it might be too much yeah it's too much but interesting to play with but maybe it's a case of not having that be so passive all right let's have a look from the side see what i've messed up looking a bit linear now get a bit of extension in that arm that's definitely got some spacing issues there i think i like how that's feeling some weirdness in that hand let's see if what's that's caused by it's looking a bit linear through here get up there a bit sooner okay i think i like how that's going i'm gonna paste it to the other side to see how it's feeling just delete this other arm grab this mirror set it by seven frames cycle infinity okay definitely some jank in there i don't like how one of the arms is firing back so soon i want to see if i can maybe get a bit more motion happening a bit sooner and then maybe this frame could actually be there and just to differentiate a little delete this frame okay, that feels a bit more connected now could definitely ease into that i'll get into that a bit sooner i think we want to rotate a bit just looking at the arc of the hand it's a bit stiff here maybe there's some motion we can do to fix that okay let's do the same delete this arm mirror infinity cycle it's pretty good but it has a similar issue to the feet where it's replacing the exact position so we do need to go in and fix that i think maybe on this one i'll just differentiate differentiate it even by probably having this back arm just poke out a little more on the back There's also a spacing issue created by, I think, what I did to the chest. So instead of fixing the chest, I'll just do it with the shoulder. So I feel like the chest is working okay. And then we'll mix up the spacing a little, not just having everything happen exactly the same as the other side. That's definitely working nicer. See if we can change something with the front part as well. Maybe we can push that like that. And then maybe the upper arm just isn't as far forward feeling fairly different which is nice uh, i'm gonna do a quick pass on these feet because yes i've copied them but they are not final i'm gonna clean this up 
Now, the reason I said that a run cycle is easier than a walk cycle is because of this part. The legs just don't take as long to clean up. There's not as many frames. There's not as much popping. There's still a little bit that needs to be cleaned up and you've got to make sure your polish is on point. But in a walk cycle, you're cleaning up like 10 frames between these three poses. And in this, you can kind of just get away with it, which is very nice. And you're just kind of worrying about the hair positions of the knee and the, the foot. Let's go all graphic front. Let's have this a bit more dynamic. These will all be on the same plane because that is not moving. I mean, that's planted on the ground. And then here we can maybe ease into that pose that he's got going on. I think I actually want to push this because I'm seeing a little hint of it back there. So I'm like, why would we not just want to see that? That'd be nice and push then. Let's favor that side. And here, of course, we want to ease to... Essentially, we want to have an arc round to then ease to the point here. So maybe this would be... There. Might be too much to see how that's working. There's no, like, definite rules to this stuff, but... I kind of like that, yes, in this direction, we're definitely favoring that end. Okay, so you can see how we're very much in this space by this point. But then from the side, we're actually doing a lot of that spacing a bit more linearly with that foot, which is nice. I like having different kinds of spacings, even on different attributes of the animation. I'll animate the toe by grabbing these FK controls and just creating a little overlap on those. It's a bit of a polishy thing. Well, let me finish off the rotation first. Okay, X, push that a bit. That's actually creating some spacing issues now. I don't want it too cartoony, really. I think I can have a little drag on these. Especially on that one. Move from a bridge a little spacing. Let's grab that first one, grab that. You know what we're going to do? Mirror. Infinity, infinity. Okay. We've got a walk, a run cycle, even. I'm going to adjust this passing position so that we're not in the same position maybe have it a bit up or a bit further down perhaps and then a bit further in and then i might just tweak a few frames as well to just slightly adjust the spacing and the angles and then i think the front is just a bit too twinned let me adjust that i'm just gonna push it back a tiny bit maybe i want it forward not sure up does I have the same spacing right now and then let's just adjust that so we get a nice straight and a nice straight at the back okay have a look from the front just want to tweak a few poses here and there this is going to throw up some issues if i adjust this see how that affects the side yeah it's not so bad i don't like how wide he feels in his arms so i am actually going to grab these I think it feels okay here it's more like this position yeah so i'll just fix one side i'm just going to do it to camera And that's all doing a run or walk cycle is for me anyway i like to tweak things i like to put things in so i can play with things in the graph editor in the viewport and just have things do the kind of spacing that i have in my mind or not even that have in my mind just that i feel like i would like to see as i'm playing through and watching my animation so i am noticing a big shift in that chest there i just want to see if we can adjust that so we don't pop over so much because i think that's also affecting the where i'm using ik chest instead of fk it's just giving me those issues where sometimes you need to go in and translate the chest but i'd rather do that than have to spend too much time in the graph at all wait what well, that over animated there i know i just added the key but i want to make sure that that's not messy okay we're fine okay that's a lot better and i just want to tweak this neck actually what is this head doing okay let me just gonna put this head into global. Just want him facing forward at all times, and I'll kind of make this neck to counter it. That feels pretty good. Let's do a head pass. I'll give that a little cycle. It's got a bit of Wait to his head now, go back to our cycle cam, see how that's working. I think I want him to just be a little more down. 
feels a bit too passive to me, so I suppose getting out of that a bit sooner, I think, would be better. Well, it's at least moving. I wonder if his legs feel a bit long when he's in suspension in the midair. I wonder if I maybe want something a bit more... Oh, it's a bit more compressed to his body. I don't know, let's try something. So we're well into polish now, I feel. And what I'm actually going to do is grab these, anything for the legs. I'm just going to make an animation layer. I just want to play with a pose. I don't want to lose the animation underneath. And I don't want to have to manipulate things in the graph a little too much. So I'm going to set a key here. And I'm going to set a key on 14. And I'm going to go to a pose where he's like suspended in the air. I'm just going to tweak some things. Just to see if I can push things a little bit more. Yeah, that could be fun. That feels really pushed. Maybe too pushed. But also I feel like maybe this, this just wants to be... A little more dynamic through there. You get this knee out a little more. Whoa, look at that foot. I don't know, this feels a little more fun to me. I might even add the arms to a layer as well. See what we can do with those. Okay, select all the objects in there. I'm just going to play it. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to put it, these things that are on the layer on that pose. And then I'll just zero that out on frame seven. It's more about that back leg. I think making that more pushed is just funny. It's just fix a bit of spacing in there. Kind of funny that it comes from underneath, but I suspect maybe this needs to be a bit more of an arc under. So that compresses into his body, which is kind of funny. I don't know, maybe this should stick a bit more. I don't like that it's going to come back and then go forward, but maybe it needs it. We always kind of progress forward, I feel. How can we make that happen? See if we can get what we have with the knee. That could be fun. I feel like that works a little better. Now let's clean up the other side. Basically doing an entire new pass on the back legs, but just on a layer so that I can turn it off. And if I want to go to the other version. If you watch my walk cycle video, you'll kind of see that a lot of this is just fixing spacing, going to another part, having a look, seeing how I feel about things, thinking to myself, hmm, what if, and then trying that and then fixing my spacing again. So it's a very iterative process that I like to have, but I think it does help to get me there in the end. So have a look at this space here. I want to see if I can push that forward more so that I get a clearer silhouette. But let me see which axes that is in by going to gimbal. Ooh, it's pretty gross. You know what? Let me add it to the layer. There's definitely some jank going on from the front view. I think it's the chest, honestly. It just goes over a bit too fast on these poses. Fix that. I know I'm on a layer. I just want to fix it. I feel like it was working before, so I'm not going to switch between layers for the sake of cleanliness. I just want to get it working. I'm not concerned how messy that is. I'll just bake it later. All right, that's giving me a nicer silhouette. In fact, I'm going to save because I haven't actually saved at all. I want to check this. The spacing of everything on this arm to check if I like it. A little something in there. And I'm just going to fix it by eye, as I have been doing. All right, so while I'm doing this, I'm also going to just give you a quick message about my mentorship review website, Keyframe Coach. It's pretty straightforward and pretty uncomplex. There's two options. There's one review or there's six reviews. You purchase six reviews from me. You basically get six reviews for the price of five. So a free review if you pay for five, so not free. <laughs> so if you're interested in that, you can check out Keyframe Coach. And it's basically just a review to help you if you're studying animation, just to get some, some polish notes and what have you. Just a second pair of eyes from someone who's been doing animation for quite a while. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, check out Keyframe Coach. Okay, we've fixed the spacing on that arm. I'm actually happy with that arm for once. Let's yeah. go. Uh, I want to get rid of this layer because I feel like I'm pretty happy with the animation that we've got from doing that layer. 
So let's delete that. And by delete it, I mean smart bait. Just hit merge. And then I'm going to take these arms and legs um, because they're all a bit offset. I'm just going to go to edit keys, bake simulation, and bake everything on one seat. And that's just clean everything up. And by clean it, I mean make it very messy, but put everything onto, onto ones so I can then just have the exact same animation cycle through. I'm going to grab this, delete these, grab this, you know, the drill by now, mirror that, offset, of course. And then one last thing, I'm going to fix this arm up because there were a few spacing issues before that I remember we had to fix. Mostly pretty good. I think it was just in here there was this one. Well, there's a couple of things, but I'll just fix what I can. Hopefully this will uh, also have the added effect of making things not feel 100% the same on both sides. Maybe I can like start to leave that one down a little earlier. I'm not really sure what's causing this, so I'm just going to blame the rig instead of my own skills. At that point, I think I'm pretty much done with my run cycle for now. A few more things we can maybe do. Just to vary the up down a little. Right, let's. Is that the root? Yeah, so. I just want to bake this. And then on this side, I will just take this and slightly push it up. I'm also going to take the feet. And they're in the air. Slightly push those up. You can't leave the feet behind. And it just creates a little more visual rhythm in our cycle. Not much. Probably won't even notice. I think that's pretty cool. Icing on the cake would be to maybe add a smear in here. Could be cool. I'm just going to create some geometry. Let's think about how we do this. Not done this before, to be fair. So could be fun, but maybe some cone. Yeah, let's create some cones. We've got a cone. I'll do just make it thin and give it a few more subdivisions in height. Sick. I'm going to grab some middle vertexes. Turn on soft selection. Just fix this up so it has an arc to it, essentially. Just creating an arc shape, turn off soft selection. Okay, we have a little arc, assign new material. Let's just give it a black Lambert for now. So I'm just going to create some of these and add them in to where I feel that they could be useful is used to bridge the gap between poses. So you want to show where it's been and where it's going. Maybe I want to attach it really. See, that's pretty cool. I think anyway. But then I'm just going to grab these, grab this even, and maybe scale it down. That could be pretty cool. We'll see what it looks like anyway. But you know what? Maybe we can even turn it off two frames later, but have on this frame, then both be scaled down a little just lend out of there just follow the arc i think i want that one scaling down it definitely bridges that more and i think i want them turning back on uh i'm just going to use the same one for the same foot Let's put frame 10 have it all just over here you can group this if you want it to work a bit better and you could rig it but i'm literally just doing some dusty geometry you know what this is bigger spacing let's add a third one that just truly really arc is kind of working. Control V to duplicate. Just going straight ahead to create some smears. Can be cool with that blended off. Let's turn it back on for that frame. I kind of like that they come together there. Let's just leave that. See how it works. That's pretty nice. We just scale them down a bit. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'll bring them back to live. This frame. We bridge in here. We're bridging this motion. Just shape them how you want. Then it could be cool to add some red in here as well. Not just black, but maybe I'm getting too into it. You know what? I just want to lose that one. That frame. And then we we're cycling, aren't we? We did it. Frame right, twenty is the cycle point. Cycle. Oh, hey, hello. I think I'm going to add a red one. I think that would be very cool. Of course, I'll make sure it's 
fine from the front as well. And it is. Just adjust a little bit. Just do the animation. Really. I feel like this will make a good thumbnail as well. But if you got clickbaited because of these, I hope it made you watch the whole thing. But that's actually a pretty good tip for animation in general. Think about what would make this animation clickable. What would make on social media someone go, hmm, what's going on there? Because I guarantee doing something like this with the effects, the, the smears, this will make the animation get more clicks because it's not just a boring run cycle. Makes you go, oh, that looks pretty good. I want to incorporate that into my animation. And people end up watching it. And whether you think that's a good thing or not is up to you. But I personally think it's a good thing because more eyes on your work means more opportunity, more credibility. You know, why are you here trying to make your animation better if it's not to work on more stuff that you like, right? There's no point hiding away your animation, not letting any recruiters see it, not letting any animators, anyone at all see it. There's no point. So whatever you can do to get more eyes on your work, treat it like a YouTube algorithm. I'm no master at that and see how many subscribers I have, how many views this video probably has. But hey, uh, we all start somewhere. I'm going to paste into onto that one. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to group it, control, and then I'm just going to offset it, offset the group itself, just a little lower. Yeah, that'll be cool. And then I'm going to make this red. New material, Lambert. I just added material to the group. New material, Lambert, red. Ooh, I like it. I'm also going to scale this group. So I just want to inherit the animation that I've already done for the rest of those and then tweak it quite easily. So let me do that on the group. It's like doing an animation there, essentially, isn't it? Ooh, I like it. This is what I love about animation. Just try something and you go, huh, actually worked. How about that? Who knew I could animate or at least do something fun and it would turn out okay? Put it right on the tip. And also move this one down a little. Might be too much. Whoa. Alright, I like it. I think that's nice. Want it a bit thinner, I think. They kind of work from three quarters as well, which is handy. It's pretty cool. I like it. I'm going to grab all of that work that I just did. I'm going to group it. We got smear left leg. Control D. I'm going to copy all of this animation using Animbot. I'm going to paste. Now we have two lots of that happening, and I'm going to offset that seven frames. <laughs> it pretty much works. Tell you what, and this is cool where you get two things happening at once. I like that a lot. It's very cool. I'm excited about this. We'll need to just adjust some things. That's okay. I'm just going to do it on the big group. It's just geometry. There is no nothing to this. I like that there's subtle differences between the legs as well. Okay, so, hey, I'm feeling like those red ones are a little big right now in the middle. We'll have the transparency a bit less. Could help. I think it does. Cool. So that's how I would animate a run cycle. Just looking at my clock. Two hours, 41 minutes that's taken, um, including polish and adding all the geometry, waffling a bit, a lot. I hope that's helpful. I hope that maybe clears some things up. Like I said, this is going to be used for a tutorial on how to do a run to stop. If you guys want to know anything else at all about animation, if you have some suggestions of things that could be fun to cover or things you're struggling with, let me know. I'll see if I have some things to say on it. And until next time, thanks a lot for watching. If this video helped, share it with a friend, consider liking the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out Keyframe Coach if you want an animation review for your work. But if you don't, then don't. Alright, thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.